I'm Anthony. I've been playing poker for a living since 2019. Hit that intro. Don't slow roll me if you get quad fours, man. You folded King King Jack Jack. You owe me three hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Your money should be in there too. Did you bluff me? You bluff me? Would I? Would I ever bluff? No, I don't tell. Thank you, sir. I would not lie to you, sir. I told you I had a full house. Doing the Lord's work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> With the $10 straddle on, there are two callers. And in the cutoff, I look down at Ace-King and 10-8 suited in hearts to my king. Not a super strong hand, I only have the second nut suit, and there's significant gaps between my cards, but given my position, I can try to take a cheap flop and see what develops. The blinds fold, the straddle checks his option, and we're heading to a flop four-handed. The flop falls Jack-9-8 with two clubs. It's checked around, and we see the 10 of hearts on the turn. The straddle now comes out firing for the full pot of 45. There's one caller, and I don't like my play here. I have a gut shot to the nuts, provided it's not the queen of clubs, and a crappy two-pair hand. With a bet and a call on such a coordinated board, a number of the cards I'm looking to hit may already be in my opponent's hands, and overall, I think I should just be folding here with a caller in between. However, I do make the call. I looked up Luxac in the dictionary. There was a picture of you, you little... Bitch. The river falls the ten of clubs. The straddle checks and the player between us bets 110. There isn't much value in raising here. Yes, we hit our hand and filled up, but we can easily run into someone with jack 10 in their hand. So I think if I raise, I'm rarely getting called by worse hands here. Once again, the $10 straddle is on. I call from early position, holding King King 10-8 suited in spades to my king. The button calls, the small blind folds, the big blind calls, the straddler checks their option, and we're going four ways to a flop. I work in mysterious ways, bitches! The flop falls King Queen Queen Rainbow. Bingo, bango, bongo, Vince. We flop the nutful house and see little reason to bet here. We want someone slow playing a queen to get there, or someone with an underpair to get there and be able to pay off something. The turn is the ace of diamonds. Unfortunately, there was no preflop raise, so the chances of us running into aces full here are pretty slim. The big blind bets 25, and I make the call. The river is the jack of spades. My opponent bets the full pot of 95, and now I raise the pot to 380. She makes the call, and we're good. I'm on the button holding ace, queen, jack, four, double suited in clubs and spades. Under the gun has potted it to 15, and we wind up going seven ways to a flop of queen, six, five, rainbow. It checks to me, and I don't like my play to check here. If someone hit this board with a wrap straight draw, they'd likely bet it. With top pair, top kicker, a blocker to the straight draws, some backdoor flush and straight possibilities, and absolute position on the button, I'd like to see me take a stab here. Anyway, we go to the turn, which falls the queen of clubs. When it checks to me, again, I'm not a fan of my decision here. I wind up betting the full pot of 110. What in the world am I afraid of? I have top trips with top kicker. I also have the nut flush draw on top of that, so I'm not worried about someone outdrawing my three of a kind with the flush. I'd really like to see me take a much smaller stab here on the button, somewhere in the neighborhood of $30 to $40. It may get value from those who think I'm stealing, and I don't expect to be behind anyone very often here. I suppose there is some merit for my bet to look more like a bluff than a value bet to some opponents, because it doesn't make a ton of sense given how the hand is played out at this point. So it may be viewed by an opponent as me betting so large because I am attempting to discourage calls. But overall, I still think long term in spots like this, my best option is make a significantly smaller bet than I did. They all fold and I'll take it down. The $10 straddle is on, and in the cutoff, I look down at King King 9 7 suited in diamonds to my king. One knucklehead Ming clicks it to 20. There's a caller, and I make the call. Although you can certainly raise to isolate in a spot like this, as our hand will play much better heads up than it will multi way. Still, if you haven't played in Texas before, you'll find that many players suffer from FOMO, the fear of missing out. And as soon as they see a big pot brewing, it doesn't matter what four cards they hold, they have to get their stacks in. So no matter how strong your hand is, you wind up being all in preflop four or five ways, your variance goes through the roof, and you have to ride the roller coaster. 
Generally, I prefer to try to play post-slot poker where my opponents will make a larger mistake rather than give in to their attempts to just play roulette and flip coins for stacks pre-flop. The big line and straddle call, we're going five ways to a flop of 5-2-2 rainbow. It's checked around. The turn is the eight of hearts. The big blind bets 30, the straddle calls, the original razor calls, and shit, I'll try to hit my two outer here. I come along as well, and we go five ways to a river, which falls the three of spades. The big blind now comes out firing 250, and everyone folds. You want to show it for the block? Ace? That's not the winner. Okay. That's the winner. <laughs> Uh, shows the deuce. Have the deuce. Deuce eight. I'm under the gun and limp in holding King Jack 10 7 suited in hearts to my king. Another hand where I'm not happy with my play. Yes, my hand has decent connectivity between the cards, but overall it's not a powerhouse and there are tons of players left to act behind me. If I was on the button, this could be a more playable hand depending on the action, but being out of position against the majority of the field, I prefer a fold under the gun here. Of course, after multiple limpers, the small blind juices the pot to 20, and now I'm roped in and possibly turning a $5 mistake into a $20 mistake into a who knows how much money this will cost me a mistake. You limp in for another five. Another five, after another big what five. Happened to you last after time. what happened to me, I didn't learn my lesson. There's two columns. I I could you one more oh, there it is. The small one makes it 20. Don't worry, he's, he's picking up the, uh, the, the tab there. All right, big blind calls. We call 20. To the limpers call. That's fine, but let's go real flat. All right, pick me this time. Last hand special. All right, I'm looking for Tony. We go five ways to a flop of ace, king, five with two diamonds. It's checked to the hijack who bets 45. One of the blinds calls. Discretion, the better part of valor. Okay, bye. Like this Thanks, one <laughs> Thanks for playing. I would have $40 more in my pocket if I had just gotten up and left. No need to thank you. Thanks, I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> that was the end of that session, which saw me make a profit of $420. Now we'll get into another session at a much looser and wilder table with tons of crazy action. Let's jump right in. The $10 straddle is on. I look down at Ace Ace, King 3, suited in diamonds to my Ace on the button. One nitwit and Ming clicks it to 20, one caller, and now another player makes a pot size re raise to 95. When it gets to me, I repot it to 435, with 510 remaining behind. The small blind shoves all in for 700, the big blind and straddle fold, two other players fold, a short stack is all in for 200, the original re raiser folds, and now one of the other callers who covers all three of us shoves his stack in. I get my total stack of 945 into the middle. And we're off to the races with close to $3,000 up for grabs. This is me. Twice as nice you with me. Right here. This, this is, is just me. This is oh, you only go part. once? Yeah. Huh? You only once? I go one and a half. What? You go only once. Yeah. 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 You're only going once? We got this thing here. All right. Pick me. All right. We're only going once. What's wrong with you, man? You're not in here. You cannot talk, okay? Four players, three all. All right, Martin. This is your chance to do the right thing. That's a, uh, need diamonds. That's bad. I have two pair right now. Nine, eight. Fuck. Okay. You guy first. We're gonna show down over here. Point four. <laughs> Fuck. This is oh, the shit. shit. This is the shit I oh, lose to. I, I love it. Four. This is the bullshit I lose to. Fuck, he got two. Okay, now slide the chips. So this one's yeah. gonna go here. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's let's see what other stupidness we got oh, going on here. Shit. Give me the queen. All right, hey, Mugs. We've reloaded for the minimum since the game is playing so bonkers. The ten dollar straddle is on. I look down at King King 8 4 suited in hearts to my king in the cutoff. There's one caller, I call, the button calls, the small blind calls. Oh, look, the aggressive Asian and the big blind makes it $70. There's two callers, I shove for 190 total. The button and small blind fold. The razor repots to isolate me, which is what I was hoping, but it doesn't work as another player shoves all in. I always go twice. Whatever you guys want to do. I just got kings with one suit. 
I was hoping. I was hoping to be up to get skids to you. <laughs> I didn't want to have to fight a bunch of hands, but. Uh, hearts. I got a club blocker. That's mine. Yeah, yeah. I'll take. Can I take it now? No. Running it twice. All right, run it twice. There we go. Clubs is bad. He needs clubs. There it is. All right. So he got there. I'm not. Oh no. Oh, I'm not. No club. Yeah. No, I got. The, I got the nuts. <laughs> I know. I know. Put that over wrong. All right, here we go. Oh, that's, why is there an ace on both boards? <laughs> yeah, I need a five. Oh, he hit the ten on the river. Yeah, you got me. Hey, uh... Oh, for the vlog. All right, there we go. We were going high, you were going low. Nice hands. There is a $20 straddle on. Three players behind us call, and in the big blind, I looked at an ace 10 3 2 with three spades to my ace. We only have $2 invested here. We're out of position against the field. The two straddlers behind us could easily take their option to raise, given how this table has been playing, and our hand is not great. We have a massive gap between the ace and 10 to make straights. The ace 2 3 will make us non nut straights, and we block ourselves from hitting our flush. I should be folding this hand from the button, let alone from the big blind. But for some dumb reason, I decide to call the $20 straddle, and seven of us are going to the flop. Bet you're glad you didn't fold now, you little bitch. All right, scratch everything I just said. Clearly, I'm a fucking poker genius as the flop falls ace ace 10 with two clubs. I check because there's only three potential overcards I need to worry about hitting, and I don't want to scare off potential customers. It's checked around, and now one of those scary cards hits the Jack of Clubs, bringing in a potential bigger full house or the unlikely Royal Flush, both of which have us drawing dead. Once again, it's checked around. The river is the Eight of Spades. I now bet the pot of 145, hoping someone will think I have to be bluffing against a weak field, and I don't want to call. Jack. Oh, we let him get there. He got there with red eights. <laughs> All right. The road to recovery. Thank you, sir. All right. This is a nine handed $15 double board bomb pot in the hijack. I looked down at King 10, five, four double suited in hearts and clubs. Poker Jesus about to get you paid. The flop comes Queen Jack 9 with two hearts and Ace King 2 rainbow. We flop the nuts up top with an open ended straight or royal flush redraw, and on the bottom we have middle pair and a gut shot to the wheel plus backdoor clubs. The small blind is shoved all in for $125 blind before the flops came down, and there's one caller. I get the rest of my chips in for $365. The player on my left snap calls. The previous cold caller folds. I ride twice. I got I got a lot going on here. I got a lot of shit. Right, your I, got, pot is I, got, here, I got this. You got a lot of stuff too. Okay, but I like mine. You got hearts. I got straight for Royal Flush. And I got three I got three kings over there. Three kings, baby. Three kings. Ship it! I still get half, I still get half, I got a royal man. Oh yeah, the other king, alright. Oh, oh, yeah, alright, alright. Oh, yeah, this is a better chance. I still did alright, I still did alright. I still did alright. Damn man, I, I, did I was too, uh, I was scooping that shit, man. What the fuck? Wow. There you go. <laughs> Not bad, it's a profit. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. 
They gave me another one. For the Royal, thank you. That's right. Royal, bless Oh, wait, do I get anything for that? Do I get like a jacket or something? No, they don't give you like a hat or something? I don't think so. No? There's shit in here. Man, that's some shit, man. They don't want me wearing a live shirt? Come on. You know, they did when they opened, they got at least a deck of cards or something. You know, they used to, remember the live deck of cards? Play the day, yeah. On the button, I looked down at Ace Ace 10 7 suited in clubs to my 10. There are three callers, a raise to 25. I just call. Two callers behind us, the small blind folds, one of the limpers who's been playing crazy pots it to 150, and there's two callers. Good luck, all in! Oh my god. Good job. Four, seven, seven. All in for 780. Maniac calls. Thank you, thank you. If I lose this, I'm going home. <laughs> Got one caller. Two callers. This will get me unstuck. We'll see. I mean, all I gotta be two hands, right? I, you know, take it. So we got two cold callers. I still have money behind. That feeling whenever you get. Are you feeling it right now? You want to side bet who wins? Ah. Oh, you get. You guys can do whatever you want. Yeah. I'm taking her though. No. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here comes the pain. Oh, okay, I bet on you. Won't ever see the hand though. She can fold and hold. Oh, I can. She can fold and hold it. Yeah, cool. Fold and hold. There we go. Hey, yo. Twice. Twice is nice. Still. We're only going for the first board. First no spade. Twice, okay? No spade. Twice is nice. No spade. No spade. I think you win. No spade. Seven. I am not on the bottom. I'm not on the top. Straight on the bottom. Queen High Street. And Jack 10 on top. Did you lose? I think so. Straight. I'm not on the top. On the bottom, and Jack Queen. Why everyone not pick me? <laughs> Why? She had kings. Can I just see for the vlog? Don't the hand. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 We booked a loss of 1397 on that session, most of it from early in the session when we got it all in with our aces and ran into a four-way all-in where, of course, the one player out of the four who covered us, who decided to be the fourth all-in, had queen-jack, four-deuce, double-suited, and he flopped a four and rivered a queen to bust all three of us. And that's um, that's one of the issues here with the games here in Texas is that you get a lot of people who have fear of missing out. So they see a big pot brewing and it doesn't matter what their four cards are. There's there's a huge pot brewing. They have to get their chips in. They have to play it. They can't help themselves. They're degenerates. And unfortunately, it's, you know, it doesn't matter how premium your hand is. It's really difficult facing three or more other hands for you to have a ton of equity if you're getting it all in preflop. So that's why you see me rarely raise preflop. I'm really trying to play postflop poker because my opponents are going to make a, a bigger mistake on, on the equity side of things rather than just getting it in preflop and hoping I come out on top. So uh, unfortunately, the aces did not hold up early in that second session. They didn't hold up at the end of the session either. And that's the way it goes sometimes. And I wanted to mention uh, viewer Cameron Andrew uh, had made a comment on my last video that uh, throwing green birds to the dealers, he, he loves that I tip well, but throwing green birds to the dealers uh, must eat into my win rate severely. And my typical tips are anywhere from $1 to $5.00. Rare occasions you're going to see me tip 10, 15, you know, 25, whatever it is. So those tend to be for significantly larger pots. Viewer Bob B asked if there are certain days and times that I play that I find are, are better for action. And actually, unfortunately, lately for the past few months, really, here in the Austin area, it 
doesn't seem to matter when I'm playing, where I'm playing. Uh, the games have gotten a lot tighter. Uh, they are not as profitable as they were when we first got here about seven months ago. And, you know, I've played at multiple properties. I've played PLO. I've played Big O. Um, you know, I've played mixed games. And it's just, it's a lot tighter, man. And we are actually uh, considering uh, when our house uh, lease is up here, because we are renting here in Austin, we may relocate to another location where the uh, the games are hopefully better. But yeah, it's uh, it's been tight, man. The um, the the video you just watched those were sessions from going back to like last November. So I'm still working my way through a ton of footage because you know if I film four sessions in a week, uh, right off the bat, right there, you've got roughly a, a month's worth of uh, vlog footage. So there's always a backlog of content. So unfortunately, the stuff you're seeing now was when the games were better and uh you know hopefully they'll turn around uh but we may relocate to dallas san antonio houston we really haven't decided yet so there's a few things that we may be working on out here in the austin area that could keep us here but nothing set in stone just yet all right that's going to be a wrap for this week i appreciate you all tuning in and we will see you in next week's episode you know after watching a video like this sometimes i'll like it sometimes i'll leave a comment and sometimes I'll subscribe. Sometimes I'll even do all three. 